So I'm being strict for no reason? Eh, sometimes. What? I'm just sit here. Yeah. What is daddy like? Daddy likes quiet time. Instead of saying good morning, <laughs> he goes, Good morning! Yes, our fun loving papa bear. You make good jokes. Really? You like my jokes? Yeah. <laughs> Very service oriented. What do you like about daddy that you want to copy? I want to have a meeting. Meeting? <laughs> okay. He is uh, gracious and understanding. I want to just be like my dad, but less strict and less stress. <laughs> Help my children in their walk with God. This is Liam, one month old. You set to a standard of what to do in the para. You there for your kids. Good job, Anna. <laughs> I never thought that um, I been seen it from that perspective as gracious and understanding. I hope I set the bar high enough for him to follow and um, supersede. Hopefully it carries on to the next generation. Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day, Papa! Happy Father's Day, Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! <laughs> Hi, Victory Kalamba. Welcome to our online worship service. Kamusta naman kayo? Yan, this is our second week recording our services dito sa ating center. Nakakamiss dito po sa center natin ngayon looking at this. Uh, I could only imagine kapag ka nagbumalik na tayo dito na magkikita-kita tayo face to face. Of course, with uh, physical distancing pa rin. If you can see right now, nakaset up po yung chairs natin na uh, 2 meters apart or yung... Uh, Six, six feet yun layo. And excited po ako sa kung anong pwedeng gawin ng Panginoon in and through us, even in the season. But I do believe na habang hindi pa tayo nakakapag-meet ngayon, still, the Lord will continue to move sa kung anong medium yung meron tayo ngayon. For now, it is online, so I do hope that the Lord is speaking directly to you. It is my prayer that the Lord will continue to transform us into becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. And right now, this is a series break, a special message for the fathers. We are here to honor yung mga dads ngayon because today is Father's Day. So if you are a father and you are watching right now, kawaii-kawaii ka naman dyan sa comments. Yan. So, happy, happy Father's Day sa bawat isa sa inyo. I'm a dad as well, so alam ko na yung feeling ng father. Ibang-iba. I can still remember the moment na una ko nakita yung aking anak. Totally changed my life. Ibang-iba rin talaga ang pagiging tatay. And uh, since this is Father's Day message, we're going to look at a story of uh, a prominent dad in the Bible. And uh, this is none other than Joseph, tatay po ni Jesus. Now, as we, uh, as we look at the story of Joseph, Jesus' earthly dad, we will look at how a righteous father who fears God, paano nga ba mag-isip at saka paano nga ba umaksyon ang mga tatay na may takot sa Panginoon. And we will also look at his situation and how he responded to it. My prayer is that God will speak, yes, to fathers, but at the same time to all of us na nangailangan na ano, na kung paano nga ba dapat mag-respond in moments like this or in, in an unexpected situation. So without further ado, if you have your Bibles with you, kindly open it up in Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. If you have your Bibles with you, kindly open it up to Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. It says here, Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. 
And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Let's all for a moment bow heads and pray. Father, we thank you for, again, another opportunity that as a church, we could gather in spirit to listen to your word. Hiwahiwalay kami ngayon, Panginoon, for some of us, meron kami pinagdadaanan ngayon, for some of us, mag-isa kami ngayon, for some of us, kasama namin yung family namin ngayon. But Lord, in whatever situation that we are in, I pray that you would speak a personal message to each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that you would take away right now every distractions that we have so that we can focus solely on your word. Holy Spirit, flow. I pray, Lord God, that you speak to us. Speak to us, Lord, a powerful message. Thank you, God. I pray that you would anoint the preaching of your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me give you a little background dito sa verse na binasa po natin. Now, uh... Alam po natin yung kwento nung Pasko. In fact, pinag-usapan po natin kung maalala mo yung Christmas message. That is about Joseph as well. Pero yun yung time na pinapanganak pa lang si Jesus. Ito po, ay uh, about two years old na siguro si Jesus nitong time na to. And uh, dahil dun sa birthday ni Jesus na natapat sa isang uh, mandatory census, sa Roman Empire, kinailangan po umuwi ni Joseph at saka ni Mary doon sa kanilang ancestral place, which is yung Bethlehem. Doon po nanganak si Mary and about two years later, dumalaw po yung mga wise men. Itong story na binasa natin, this was a uh, moments after dumalaw ng mga wise men. Kaya ang simula nito, now when they had departed, talking about the wise men. Sabi dito, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. I realize that sometimes God will call you to get you out of that place kung saan mo na nakasanayan and to bring you to an unfamiliar place for you to be safe. Sometimes God will call you to get out of the place you are familiar with to save you from danger. And what's amazing is Joseph obeyed. And the, because of the obedience of Joseph, he saved his family. But before he obeyed, he had to listen to God first. Ang ganda ng dynamics dito, nangusap sa kanyang Panginoon and siya nag-obey. Let me pause there for a while and let me speak to fathers. Fathers, I want to exhort you right now. It is so important that in our leadership, pagdating sa ating family, we listen to God. It is so important for us as fathers to learn to listen to God. And I pray that our leadership will be characterized by how we listen to God. Alam ko may burden ang mga fathers. Alam ko mahirap maging tatay. Yung anak ko nga, toddler pa lang, hirap na hirap na ako. How much more yung maraming anak? How much more yung ang anak nila, malaki na? And lahat tayo, fathers, we know the burden. We know yung, yung unspoken burden with, with, with the fathers na alam natin na merong need to provide, need to protect. Alam natin yun. But I hope that we won't carry that burden alone. After all, it is God who calls us to be fathers. Therefore, it is God who will empower us to be fathers. So I hope that we learn to listen to God. Fathers, we are called to lead. Tinawag po tayo ng Panginoon para mag-lead. But our leadership is only as good as our listening. May we learn to listen to God. We need to listen to God. Sa nangyayari ngayon, uh, ang daming boses na naririnig, yung boses ng experts, boses na kung ano-ano sa social media. And if we are not careful, it will affect our heart. It will affect our decision. And instead of imparting faith sa ating family, we could be imparting fear because of uh, who we listen to. That's why it's very important for us to listen to God. Listening precedes leading. Tuloy natin yung kwento dito. Now, imagine si Joseph, upon uh, hearing that, 
uh, take note, nasa ancestral place si Joseph. Something that where he is familiar. Something na uh, somewhere kung saan siya nakatira. Ito yung place kung saan kilala niya yung mga tao sa paligid. Ito yung place na kung saan may stable siya na trabaho. Pero tinatawag siya ni Lord palabas dito. Sure, para iligtas sila, pero it is so uncomfortable kapag ka tinawag ka ni Lord palabas dun sa isang bagay na familiar ka. They had to leave Joseph's ancestral place and they had to live in a foreign land. And imagine the frustration. He probably needed to leave his old job behind. Diba carpenter si Joseph? Malamang may mga, siguro may mga kontrata siya na hindi matutuloy. Siguro yung savings niya mauubos kasi pupunta sila sa Egypt. Kasi mag pa sila ng apartment doon. We do not know. Pero he moving out of that comfort zone from that ancestral place to a place na foreign, to a place na hindi originally siya taga doon, that is so uncomfortable. A lot of adjustment will be made. Now, most likely, si Joseph, he would have to find a new job in Egypt depending kung gaano katagal sila magstay sa Egypt. Lalo pa ngayon, meron na siyang malaking responsibility. Hindi na lang sila basta dalawa ni Mary, nandiyan na si Jesus. Kailangan niyang buhayin si Jesus. After all, he is raising the Son of God. How many of you can imagine the burden na meron si Joseph? Kailangan ng panggatas ni Jesus, kailangan ng diaper. Yan, of course, wala pang diaper back then. But you know, a baby is needy. And of tayong mga tatay, we have that uh, drive to provide for our children. Tapos lilipat siya sa isang lugar kung saan foreign land. So, sa, sa isang lugar na kung saan wala pa siyang trabaho doon. He is a father. He needed to provide. He needed to take care of his family. Now, according to some scholars, ang estimate daw ng stay ni Joseph at ni Mary sa Egypt is around uh, several months up to two years. We, we do not know kung gaano katagal sila sa Egypt. We do not know kung gaano katagal nag-stay. Pero na-imagine ko lang kasi uh, lahat po tayo ngayon, we are in the middle of a great adjustment. Diba, two months of community quarantine, probably for some of you, nag-adjust yung trabaho nyo, nag-adjust yung habits ninyo, nag-adjust yung lifestyle ninyo. Pero na-imagine ko lang, what if, what if, yung in-stay ni Joseph at saka ni Mary sa Egypt, what if it's two years? Paano kung dalawang taon pala sila nag-stay? Imagine, nakahanap na siguro si Joseph ng trabaho, malamang kasi ano yung kakainin nila. Nakaka-adjust na siguro sila dun sa place kung saan sila pinalipat ni Lord. Nakaka, marami na siguro silang naging kaibigan. Siguro may mga, may, nakapag-member na si Joseph dun sa Carpenters Association na meron dun sa Egypt. O kung ano man, nakaka-adjust na sila dun sa bagong lugar. And then the Lord would call them out of that place again. Imagine, adjustment after adjustment. Just when his family was beginning to adjust to their life, God called them out of it. In verse 19, sabi ito, But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. Imagine what he is feeling nung moment na sinabi sa kanya ni Angel of the Lord o sinabi sa kanya ni God na kailangan na niya umalis uli sa Egypt. Imagine the frustration. Siguro nagereklamo si Joseph noon, Lord, kung kailan naman nagkatrabaho na ako, Lord, nakapag-open na ako ng shop, Lord, nakapag-open na ako ng construction firm, or whatever that is. Tapos papalipatin mo ako ngayon bagong adjustment na naman. Imagine the fear that he was feeling. Lord, safe na nga ba talaga? Imagine adjustment upon adjustment. But here's the thing. Despite what he was feeling, he obeyed. Sumunod pa rin si Joseph. In verse 21, it says here, And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. May obedience na nangyari. Kahit nandun yung emotion, may obedience pa rin. But again, that doesn't mean na nawala yung emotion. In verse 22, it says here, But when he heard that our 
Archelaus or Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Joseph listened to God, yes. Pero nakikibalita pa rin siya. Nakiki, kumbaga, inaalam pa rin niya, safe na nga ba talaga doon? Kaya nga, he heard eh, that Archelaus was reigning over Judea that time. Kasi nakikibalita siya, may practical wisdom pa rin na involved. And upon hearing that, yes, merong fear. Yes, totoo naman. Matakot ka kasi anak nga ito, eh, na nagpapapatay dun sa anak mo. Pero he still listened to God, faith over fear pa rin. We live in a time na ang daming news na naririnig natin, kung ano-ano, uh, marami dito fake news, pero meron din naman totoo. And uh, hindi maiwasan na tayo po mga Kristiyano, makakapakinig tayo ng news. And it is wise to listen to what's happening, pero at the end of the day, I hope that the, the, the determining factor for your decision is not the practical wisdom of the world, but the practical or the spiritual wisdom of the Word of God. I hope na kung ano yung sinabi ni Lord, yun pa rin. In fact, yes, merong fear kay Joseph, pero uh, I want you to notice this, nakuha niya pa matulog. Kasi pag tinuloy mo yung verse, sabi ito, and being warned in a dream na nanaginip na si Joseph, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled that he would be called a Nazarene. Si Jesus daw magiging Nazarene. So, Uh, if you look at the story of Joseph, in every twist and turn in the life of Joseph and his family, you would find that this happened, yung mga nangyari sa buhay ni Joseph, so that what God had spoken would be fulfilled. The point is, God planned this all along. Lahat na nangyayari kay Joseph, pinlano na to ng Panginoon. But while I was thinking about this, probably si Joseph hindi niya alam yun. Probably he was caught in the moment na in danger yung anak niya, nakinig siya kay Lord, inaalis niya, pinila sa Egypt. Tapos after months to two years, na nandun na, nakasettle na sila, sinabi sa kanya ni God na kailangan na nila bumalik kasi safe na. Probably he was caught in that moment. Probably hindi naman niya alam na nasa plano to ni Lord that it is written na sinabi ni Lord through the mouths of the prophets in the Old Testament or probably alam niya probably si Joseph binabasa niya yung Old Testament tapos alam niya ay ito mangyayari nito but here's the thing it's one thing to read it in the Bible it's another thing to experience it tama ba? Hindi porke na babasa natin sa Bible, automatically kaya na agad natin i-apply. And I realize, reading it in the Bible and experiencing it in real time is different. Pero it took Joseph a step of faith to obey God. For example, tayo po alam naman natin may plano si Lord. Alam naman natin tong 2020, despite the challenges na pinagdaanan natin, yung pumutok yung taal, namatay si Kobe Bryant, tapos ngayon may coronavirus na nangyayari, and all the issues we are facing as a nation, alam naman natin may plano pa rin ng Panginoon kahit ganito, tama ba? Pero ilan sa inyo tinatamaan pa rin kayo ng fear? Tinatamaan pa rin kayo minsan ng doubt? It takes faith to really believe God's word despite what's happening all around. Living in faith is not easy. So what can we do? Ano yung pwede natin gawin? The, meron po ko ditong tatlong practical, uh, uh, practical advice na makikita natin dito sa word ni God. Una-una is read and believe the word. Yun yung ginawa ni Joseph. He believed the word of God. Sure na naginip siya and probably for most of us, hindi naman tayo na naginip tapos naririnig natin si Lord. But we have the Bible. We can read the Bible. The point is theological reflection. I hope that when we decide, we go to theological reflection. Ano yung sinasabi sa word ni God? 
Pangalawa po is be informed in what's happening in the world. I'm not saying na porky pinagbabasa ko kayo ng Bible at sinasabi ko sa inyo na mag-trust kayo sa word ni God. Ika-cut off niya na natin yung sarili natin sa sinasabi ng mundo. No. Kailangan pa rin natin maging informed. Be informed in what's happening in the world because there is a practical wisdom in it. And that's the point. Practical wisdom. In our time and age right now, I hope, yes, that we will be in faith na hindi po tayo tatamaan ng virus. Pero please, practice uh, physical distancing pa rin. Practice proper biosecurity pa rin. Maghugas pa rin tayo ng kamay natin kasi it's practical wisdom and it is valid. Sure, it is by faith, pero at the same time, let's exercise practical wisdom pa rin. Just like si Joseph. Diba, inalam niya muna, tapos narinig niya, ay, anak pala ni Herod, yung nag-aari ngayon. So, but, but here's the thing, I know that when we listen to news, it might bring fear in our hearts, but at the end of the day, ito yung pangatlo po dito, I pray that we will discern what God is saying at the moment. The point is spiritual discernment. We look at the wor- what the Word of God says, We look at what the world is saying for practical wisdom, but we listen to God. Lord, what are you saying to me and for my family, for our church, sa lahat ng area ng buhay ko, what are you saying at this moment? I hope that the primary determining factor sa lahat ng ating decision is still the Word of God. So I want to encourage you, take time to listen to God because He is speaking. Nagsasalita po ang Panginoon. He is speaking for you, speaking in you. Minsan He's speaking through you. He's speaking through His Word, the Bible. He's speaking through other people. The Lord is speaking. Ang tanong na lang, are we listening? Uh, last year, Meron po tayong uh, church member na nag-decide to migrate sa New Zealand. Yan yung family ni Migs. Si Migs po isa sa ating campus leaders. Tapos si Romel at saka si Pam, yung parents niya, isa po sa mga uh, regular attendee po natin at saka leaders dito po sa Victory Calamba. And okay yung trabaho nila. Okay yung kalagayan nila dito sa Pilipinas. But they believe that the Lord spoke to them na mag-migrate papunta dun sa, ano, sa New Zealand. May opportunity na nagbukas sa kanila. Now, if you look at practical wisdom, parang hindi agad-agad to practical. Kasi okay yung trabaho nila. Nasa kalambasayan si Migs, making, making an impact there. So, pag tinignan mo yung buhay nila, okay talaga. Pero they listened to God. What they did was they look at the Word of God. Tiningnan nila ano nga ba yung sinasabi ng Bible. Dapat ang family magkakasama. They consulted sa iba't ibang leaders. They talked to their pastor. Pinagpray nila maigi. Tapos when it seems like parang hindi mangyayari yung plano na sinabi sa kanila ni Lord kasi ang daming challenges, they kept on believing God. And right now, nandun na sila sa New Zealand. Baka nanonood sila ngayon making an impact there, si Migs patuloy na ginagamit ng Panginoon sa kung saan siya nandun ngayon. Imagine, it's not practical, but they listened to God. Their determining factor, or yung nagdetermine ng kanilang decision was not practical wisdom alone. It is the Word of God. Pero ang amazing po dun sa kwento nila is yung father kung paano niya nilid yung family. I remember that time na nag-meet kami dun sa office. Tapos ano, uh, very ano lang siya, very calm. Tapos uh, imagine ko nga si Joseph, parang ganun, yung tatay ni Jesus. Very calm, tapos nakikinig lang siya. Tapos uh, imagine the humility to listen, di ba? Tapos i-give up yung kung anong meron sila dito sa Philippines in order to go where God has called them to go. I really admire si Sir Romel nung moment na yun. What a great trait for a father to lead his family papunta sa kung ano yung sinasabi ni Lord. 
And I hope that tayo, fathers, as we continue to lead our family, may we listen to God more. Hindi po dun sa mga barkada natin, hindi po sa mga tropa natin, hindi po dun sa sinasabi ng mundo. Yes, pakinggan din natin yun kasi may practical wisdom naman dun. Pero I hope that we will listen to God more. Amen? As I close, yung account ni Joseph, yung tatay ni Jesus, actually ended here pagdating sa book of Matthew. Sa book of Luke, the last time that he was mentioned is in the story where si Jesus ay nawala for three days sa sinahanap nila sa temple. Yun ay yung huling mention na sa Luke chapter 2. After that, he was never mentioned again. When Jesus' ministry started, wala na si Joseph doon, yung wedding in Cana. Wala si Joseph doon. Yung uh, pagkapako ni, ano, ni Jesus sa cross, sa Golgotha, wala na si Joseph doon. Kasi kung nandun si Joseph, ang may karapatan na maglibing kay Jesus, si Joseph. Pero hindi, ibang Joseph na yung naglibing kay Jesus. Kung nandun si Joseph, hindi ibibili ni Jesus si Mary kay John. Ibibili niya kay Joseph kasi yun yung asawa, pero wala na si Joseph that time. Dito sa moment na to, kumbaga parang si Joseph, he took the backstage para si Jesus ano na, ma-fulfill kung ano yung, yung kanyang purpose dito sa mundo. But he did his part. He raised Jesus. Naging karpintero din si Jesus, kagaya niya. He did his part. Kung hindi sumunod si Joseph sa boses ng Panginoon nung bata pa si Jesus, hindi mangyayari. Yung, kung ano yung, hindi magagawa ni Jesus yung kanyang purpose. Joseph obeyed God. And because of that obedience, he didn't just save his family. His obedience eventually led to the salvation of the world. That is how amazing yung kwento ni Joseph. His life was characterized by series of challenges, listening, adjustment, paulit-ulit. Challenges, maikinig siya kay Lord, mag adjust Challenge, maikinig kay Lord, mag adjust What a great leader. Pero yung leadership niya was characterized by him listening to God. What I really love about Joseph is how he listened to God. Sure, sa dream do daan, eh, hindi ko alam, siguro yun yung ano nila. Uh, ganun mangusap sa kanya, Panginoon. Pero, The obedience na meron si Joseph, walang pride-pride. Pag sinabi ni Lord na gawin niya, gagawin niya. I want to speak to fathers again. Fathers, we need to listen more. In this time na kung saan ang daming challenge, the default setting natin mga tatay is to find stability, to find security, to, to, ano, to rely in our own discarte. Yun yung default natin kasi we are fathers. Pero I want to encourage you, listen to God more. Kasi yes, you are the leader of your family, pero we are sons as well. Anak pa rin tayo ng Panginoon and we have to listen to our Father. Think about that. Kung ang default setting natin mga tata ay maghanap ng security and stability, na kanino nga ba talaga yung tunay na security and tunay na stability? Nasa Panginoon din naman, tama ba? If we want to protect, provide, and effectively lead our family, we need to listen to God. Again, Joseph's obedience led not just to the salvation of his family, but ultimately to the salvation of the world. Privilege po maging tatay. Privilege po maging anak ng Panginoon. So I hope and I pray that we will continue to cultivate our listening so that as we continue to lead our family, we will continue to lead our family in integrity, in righteousness, and in the ways of the Lord. Amen? Why don't we all take this time to pray for a moment? I want to pray right now for all the fathers in Victory Calamba. Yan, uh, I really hope na makita kita tayo face to face. Pero I'm just imagining the faces of the fathers 
yung mga kaibigan ko di sa Victory Kalamba, yung mga tatay na umaten sa Victory Kalamba, I want to pray for you right now. Lord, thank you for the fathers in our church. Salamat, Panginoon, for every father that is listening right now. Thank you for the calling. Panginoon, it is such a privilege for us to be able to raise a, a child. Salamat, Panginoon, for this calling na dahil sa iyo galing ang calling na to, you are the ones gonna empower us to continue to provide, to protect, and to nourish our family. Salamat, Panginoon, that though we have a great responsibility as fathers, we can rely on you, our Father in heaven. God, I pray that you would remove every false burden sa balikat ng mga tatay ngayon and we continue to empower them and bless them as we continue to lead our family. Salamat, Panginoon. We honor you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Grabe po ang pagiging tatay. Imagine, in the Bible or yung pinaka-prominent na relationship na meron tayo kay God, uh, isa sa mga unang-unang relationship natin kay Lord ay yung, yung father and son. And depende sa kung paano po natin i-reflect yung pagiging father ni God sa mga anak natin, nakadepende doon kung gaano ka bilis nila matatanggap that God is their father. So, I know we're not perfect, but there's grace. May grace po ang Panginoon. That, that is why we need to listen to Him more. Now, speaking of listening to the voice of God, I want to pray for you. If you ha- are having a hard time listening to God's voice this season, uh, syempre, ang dami natin naririnig na masamang balita, ang dami natin nababasa na kung ano-ano, though marami sa nababasa natin, hindi totoo, pero ngayon, ang hirap ng malaman kung ano yung totoo sa hindi. If you're having a hard time listening to God's voice, I want to pray for you right now. Can you type in the comments, listen to God? Type mo, listen to God. This is a, a, a declaration for all of us that we will listen to God. We will listen to His Word and not in the world. We will let the Word frame our life and not the world. This is a declaration, but at the same time, as you type in those comments, I want to encourage the Victory Group leaders to pray for these people. And uh, hindi lang basta pray, I want to encourage you to send them personal message, connect to them, kasi baka kailangan nilang kausap. Sometimes the reason why we are finding it hard to listen to the voice of God, kasi mag-isa tayo. Kaya po tayo nilagay ni Lord sa isang church community so that we can discern the voice of God. We can study the Bible together. So iba pa rin kapag ka magkakasama. Amen? So I want to pray for you right now. Lord, I lift up to you every person who's having a hard time listening to your voice. Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat kasi una sa lahat, nakasulat sa iyong salita, that we can hear you. Your sheep can hear your voice. And right now, Lord God, we may be having a hard time because of the news all around, because of what we're going through right now. Pero Lord, right now, we choose to focus on you. Holy Spirit, help us to hear you clearly. Lord, tulungan mo kami na yung mga nababasa namin sa Bible, ma-apply namin sa pang-araw-araw namin buhay. Lord, kung meron pong takot sa puso namin ngayon, you have said in your word that perfect love casts out fear. Tanggalin mo po yung takot sa puso namin so that we can focus solely on your word alone. Lord, we want you. We want to hear your voice. Salamat, Panginoon. In Jesus' name. Amen. I also want to encourage everyone na kapag narinig natin kung ano sinasabi ng Panginoon, patuloy natin siyang sundin. Kagaya ni Joseph. Amen? Now, as we close this service, again, we want to thank everyone who came dito sa ating uh, online worship service. We look forward to that day na makapag-meet ulit tayo face-to-face. Please continue to pray for that. And uh, as we close, let me pray a prayer of blessing for you and your family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. And may the peace that surpasses all understanding be upon you in the name of Jesus. 
amen and amen. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, God bless.